Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College presents Liberty Mail with the Student Fellows of Faith and Freedom. Hello and welcome to Liberty Mail. I'm Grace Riley and today we have a special guest, Emily Klusendorf. She is a senior English major here at Grove City College and we're here in the underground studio for the Institute for Faith and Freedom. We're really excited about this episode today. Emily is a friend of mine and she's very passionate about life and all things pro-life. So we thought it would be a really interesting conversation to bring her on and have her share about things that she's passionate about. And especially with the life issue, you know, being so important and so prevalent. And before we really get into it, I just want to bring up some events that we have coming up for the Institute for Faith and Freedom in the next month or so that are celebrating life. So coming up in April on the 13th and 14th, we will be having our annual conference, which this year is titled Post Row America. So with that, it'll be a conference covering all Things Pro-Life will have Abby Johnson as our keynote speaker. And for those of you who don't know who Abby Johnson is, she was a formal, former Planned Parenthood worker who then became pro-life after what she saw. And now she speaks out for life and in support of life. So she will be coming and sharing her story and speaking on the evening of Thursday, April 13th. So all of those things will be really exciting, which you won't want to miss. And you can find that at the link that's in the description. You can find more information and tickets. And also, if you go to faithandfreedom.com slash events, you can find more information on that. And if you're a student at Grove City College, you can come to the Unplanned Movie Night, which is a movie about Abby Johnson's story on Tuesday, April 11th. So we have a lot of events coming up surrounding this topic, but today we're just going to have a conversation breaking it down more. So Emily, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I know we were talking a lot about it, and I'm just really excited to be more in-depth about it. Yeah, it's yeah. a pleasure to have you. So yeah. just to begin, can you tell everyone listening why you're so passionate about life and the yeah. pro-life issue and, you know, what inspired you to speak out so passionately on this topic? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because my dad is very passionate um, about this work in particular. He's a pro-life apologist. He's written a few works on it. Um, you might have heard him on Focus on the Family. Um, he went to Biola, graduated from there. Um, and I just loved it. I grew up watching him speak about it. I have probably memorized all of his <laughs> speeches on it. And actually, most of what I'm going to say today is his content. So thank you, Dad. Um, but I think it really just came from a place of understanding how broken our world is today and seeing how the culture has shifted so drastically from when I was younger and even more so now I see how important it is that we are protecting and preserving life, um, especially because we don't even know what it is to be a human being today. So I think just throughout the years I have been trained, um, not really purposefully, but kind of so. And then today I just see everything happening. I'm like, yeah, it's time for truth. And that's the important thing that we have to share. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the issue, I think, and I'm sure you agree that transcends politics in a way. It's not It's not necessarily just a political side of, oh, absolutely. well, this is just a political issue. One of the things that commentators dispute back and forth and debate back and forth, this mm -hmm. is about life, yeah. uh, which is a much deeper issue, and especially as Christians, yeah. one that we should take very seriously and address. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. so just starting with that foundation, um, how should Christians mm -hmm. respond to this debate? And obviously there's a lot going on in mm -hmm. politics, and it's a very intense issue. In my experience, the issue of life and being pro-life or pro-choice, pro especially amongst women, has been the source of the most tension yes. I've ever seen in political debate, even yeah. in my experience, sharing posts about pro-life mm -hmm. things or speaking out at all has gained the most pushback out of any other topic. Mm -hmm. So it certainly is a really heated issue that people yeah. are very passionate about. But as Christians, obviously, when we enter into the political world and, you know, into conversations like this, 
how should we approach that and respond and focus yeah, on? Absolutely. Um, I just want to say I'm so glad you framed it as Christians because I find that actually among Christian circles, this is one of the most difficult issues to talk about just because we don't know how to talk about it and we don't want to offend someone. Um, so thank you for framing it that way. But I, I think as Christians, we need to run as fast as we can from two modes of thought. Firstly, the idea that because abortion is a quote-unquote a political issue, it should not be discussed in the church. And secondly, that the pro-life position is strictly a religious one, and usually people fall within one of these two camps. Um, as far as the first camp goes, there are very many issues in the Bible that a postmodern culture today will deem political and therefore unsuitable to discuss in church settings. And while scripture does not say verbatim that abortion is wrong, it does tell us that human lives are valuable and therefore worth protecting. And I believe that scripture has a whole lot to say about human life and dignity. Worthwhile churches are going to do two things. They're going to read and recite scripture and preach the gospel. And abortion is completely within that realm because it has everything to do with human value and human dignity. And abortion isn't a political issue. It's a deeply personal and ethical issue. So that's that first train of thought. The second train of thought is that even though the Bible has something very critical to say about the sanctity of human life, primarily that we are creating God's image, it doesn't tell us how to argue for the unborn. And Psalm 139, as wonderful as that passage is, is not our argument and it's not our platform. Um, Pro-lifers and pro-choicers alike make the mistake of assuming that the pro-life position is a quote-unquote religious one because most individuals who are pro-life are also Christians. Now, yes, that statistic is the case, but there are many other people I know who are not within the Christian realm at all, and they are pro-life. Mm -hmm. um, arguments are not religious, and they cannot be religious. People are. And just because an argument has biblical support, that doesn't make it any less worthy to be considered by people unfamiliar with Scripture. And so in light of these two camps, I think it's really important that we establish what our primary goal is. As great as the gospel is and as much as we want to promote it, our goal is not to preach Scripture. Our goal is to protect human life, acknowledging that Scripture is the foundation for that, acknowledging that the Bible has very important words to say about what it means to be a human being and how we protect life and protect each other and love each other well. But we can't quote Psalm 139 and assume, okay, that's our argument, because that's not accessible to people. Our goal is the protection of human life. Yes, and I think a really good point that you're making is while we can do both, while we can obviously evangelize and promote the gospel and share the gospel with people and as we should in everything that we do, it's also, you know, important to realize that when you're talking to a peer or right. someone in your life that is not a Christian and that is the only argument you present, then you're, they're not seeing eye to eye with you. You're yeah. not talking about the same thing. You're missing each other. And mm -hmm. if as Christians and if as pro-life Christians, we care about really changing hearts and minds, we have to start more at the foundation and kind of work from there. We can't Absolutely. just kind of throw out scripture and assume, well, you know, this is this is truth so they'll understand right. and because the whole point is people who are not Christians or are do not operate in that same way. Absolutely. So if we really care about convincing those people, talking to them, reaching them, we have to be mindful of that yeah. and be ready to back up, even though what we are saying is rooted in scripture, we have to be ready to back that up in other ways also. And the good thing is the truth is on our side. Yes. So the yes, truth is absolutely. the truth. So yeah. what we're saying, like, for example, making a scientific argument mm -hmm. about life, saying life begins at, at conception, mm -hmm. that's a scientific ar argument. And it also is completely backed up and based in scripture Yes, and what God tells us and what God tells us about life and how he created it. Yeah. So that is a, that's based in scripture. Yeah, absolutely. But if you're saying it in a scientific way where you're not forgetting the scripture, you're not forgetting that truth because those two things are in line and are working together actually. Yes, but absolutely. But definitely, yeah, I think thinking about the way to approach things, especially with people who do not, are not Christian. And I think what I've seen a lot, and I'm sure what you've seen as you've explained is that 
if you just kind of approach this as saying, well, I'm just going to make a scripture-based argument without explaining that further or breaking it down into different terms that maybe someone who wasn't a Christian would understand and resonate with, you may lose them in their attention and yeah. your own credibility before you even, you know, talk about right. what you're trying to say. So I think focusing on the issues and what everything means and what that scripture means and, you know, how that's applicable is important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And again, like the goal of being pro-life and by communicating our position and communicating well is not such that we're evangelizing. We are not sharing the gospel in the most direct sense. We are sharing the gospel in that we are protecting and promoting life and the Mm -hmm. preservation of that life. And I think that's really valuable. But at the end of the day, we're not evangelizing. We are preserving and protecting human life and speaking the truth. And the truth is a beautiful thing that we have to keep coming back to. Like that really is it. It's the truth. And I think the really encouraging thing about what you're saying too is that those things do go hand in hand. It's not one without the other. Absolutely. Meaning if you are focusing on truth um, and preserving life, that brings up a lot of thoughts and questions about, well, what is life? What does that mean? And why is life so valuable? So I think that's it's another really great opportunity to reach people um, and have them really think about fundamental yeah. truths that are obviously answered by the God. But um, mm-hmm. just moving forward, so you're talking a lot about the pro-life position mm-hmm. and um, what our position as pro-life Christians, but what does that look like? What is the pro-life position really, and what does it mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is kind of a, a complicated answer, but I would say that the pro-life position really looks beyond the realm of human identity and functionality. And what I mean by that is that our principles and our vision come down to the main thing, which is the sanctity and protection of the human life. Human life that is valuable, not because of what that life contributes to our society, our opinions, our preferences, our circumstances, but because that life in the most simple and beautiful sense is human. And our argument must always always come back to the question, what is the unborn? I agree. As a woman, I agree that a woman should have every right to privacy and bodily choice if, if the unborn are not human beings. And before we can determine whether or not to kill something, we must first determine what is the thing that we are killing. And if the thing that we are killing is a human being, we have a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said. Thank you. (laughs) Um, And obviously from that, the response that you'll get from pro-choicers is going to be, well, that's just the point. Human, they're not human beings. They're clumps of cells. It's just a fetus. It's just, um, I've heard horrible things. I've heard parasite. Mm -hmm. I've heard horrible things, which um, is, will be the common response if you are to tell someone that's pro-choice. Well, if it's a human being, we have a problem. So, how yeah. do we know that it's the baby is a human being? How yeah. do we know that? Uh, what is that based in? And how can we kind of respond to those points that pro-choicers will bring up? Right. Well, for that, um, we don't turn to the Bible. We actually turn to the science of embryology. And the science of embryology states that from the earliest stages of development, from the moment of conception, you are a distinct living and whole human being. You're not a part of a human being like the clump of skin cells on the back of your hand. And you're not just a part of your mother's body. You were human. And you have been human since the moment of fertilization. Yes, You were smaller than you are today. Yes, you were less developed. Yes, you were in the womb and now you are out. Yes, you are more independent than you once were. But these differences do not make you any less human than you are currently, nor are they reasons to exterminate you in the name of privacy and preference. Yeah, I mean, again, great points. And and that is, again, the point of that is a scientific argument. And people on the left tend to appreciate science more than anything else as backing. So you would think that this would be something that was widely agreed upon. Yeah. And it's it's discouraging that it isn't, but I think that is changing and there's it is getting better. But exactly what you said, it's a scientific argument that yeah. life begins at conception. Um, and again, it is supported by scripture, yeah. which is Absolutely. wonderful because the yeah. truth is the truth. Yes. But it is 
um, in debating with people, that is, that's scientific. It's not yeah. just a quote unquote religious argument. Yeah. It is based in science. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I think um, also what's interesting is pro-life Americans face a lot of objections today and mm. a lot of arguments from the other side. So what are some of the most prevalent objections that pro-life yeah. to pro-lifers today? Yeah, it's interesting because if you had asked me that about 10 years ago, my answer probably would have been different. Um, unfortunately for us, it is very difficult to be anything other than pro-choice in our <laughs> deeply problematic society. Um, and what we have working against us is really a larger issue of what it is exactly to be a human being. For some reason, our culture cannot get past the idea that human beings are valuable simply because they are human beings. If you notice, we measure everything by our identities and not our personhood. We have forgotten that to be an individual is to be human, regardless of our preferences and personal labels. If you notice race, ethnicity, gender, sexual preferences, performances, positions, desires, intelligence, etc., are not what make us human beings and therefore valuable. We're human beings because we're human beings, made in the image of God, made a little lower than angels, but higher than the rest of creation. And today's cultural climate is so much more concerned with identity and performance and purpose than we are essence. Yeah, and, and from that, I would make the point, too, that I think we can really see amongst our culture the, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, but just the fact that people put their identities in all the wrong places. Yes. People are searching so desperately for meaning in yeah. all of the wrong places. Um, and there's a reason that they're not finding that and that we're having so many problems today, whether it be depression, all of the, all of these things that we're seeing today. Um, I would answer with, you know, the fact that our identities come from God and the yeah. only way to, you know, understand the true value, meaning uh, and meaning of life yeah. and what it means to be a human being is to put your worth in the Lord and not in worldly things yes. and whatever which way the culture is trending because, yeah. and that's easy to do because if you turn on your phone, watch a TV show, there are all sorts of different ideas that the secular culture floats around mm -hmm. of what you should put your meaning in and mm -hmm. how you should define your worth. But yeah. that's why we're falling short. And yes. I think in this debate as well, that's why there are so many people that are pro-choice and that get hung up on that because they haven't really thought about, well, like, what does it mean to be a human being? Yeah, absolutely. And because our culture is so lost on that fact in the first place, I, I noticed that pro-life or pro-choicers, <laughs> they don't argue. <laughs> um, they just drop fallacious one-liners. And another great element about the truth is that it teaches you how to present the truth well. And so you're, you'll hear things in the media or you're, you're, you're you will hear people say things like, oh, well, you don't have a uterus, you don't have an opinion. Or if you oppose abortion, you oppose health care for women. You have no sympathy for women in cases of rape or making abortion illegal doesn't ban abortion. It just bans safe abortions. And these are all issues that are very sadly at the forefront of our deeply selfish age. And because of this, I now see a subtle shift in the abortion issue. Sadly, um, what I notice most clearly now is that most young men and women who support abortion are men and women who couldn't care less about whether or not the child is a human being, which is devastating because they care a whole lot more about their sexual liberation than they care about what stage a child has a heartbeat. And the truth is, Grace, the science is simple. We don't need to dive into the depths of embryology to understand when a human being is formed. Anyone that has been within the public school system since the seventh grade is knowledgeable of these facts. But our culture cares so much more about the preservation of the self than the protection of other human beings that do not fit into our imaginary realm of convenience and enjoyment. And if you noticed, pro-aborts don't ever argue for their position. They just insult you for not agreeing with their ideology of feelings and self. And they don't have an argument to give, at least not one that I've seen and have been able to respond to well, because how do you justify the intentional killing of an innocent human being 
regardless of how you feel about their development or existence. Yeah, and I one thing I thought of as you were talking too is the the fact of there are people who are not necessarily super attached to the pro-choice side. They just trend that way because they haven't really thought about it or yeah, they their absolutely. friends are the same way. And what's interesting is a lot of live action, which we might talk about yes, later in yeah. resources, live action is a great organization yeah. that does a lot of work on making sure that people understand what a life is and advocating for life. Yes. And the interesting things that they've done, they've walked around and shared videos of what an abortion really is. Yeah. So they'll show people on the street, this is what happens in an abortion and yeah. the the actual medical things. And most people are unaware uh, that during an abortion, it is a violent process where yes. um, in the second trimester, babies are torn limb from limb. So yeah. it's a violent process. Yeah. So, and at its very core, it comes down to life. But further than that, when we see these arguments of, well, abortion on, on demand, no questions asked up until the moment of birth, because that's how radical the pro-choice movement has become. It used to be obviously safe, rare, legal, but now it's moved to, well, any time for any reason up until the moment of birth. So I think as we've seen this trend, I do think people that are more in the middle maybe, but trend more to the pro-choice side, at least are opening their eyes when they're seeing the truth. And that's the thing. If you show someone what happens in an abortion, that's that changes changing. their mind, yeah, absolutely. Um, which is important. And yeah. but what you're the people that you're speaking about as well, though, do exist who know these things but don't care and yeah. just will die on the hill. Yeah, um, basically, no matter yeah. what, they don't want their minds to be changed. Um, and that is a really sad thing. Yeah, I would also like to clarify. You know, there are obviously different types of people on the pro-choice end Mm -hmm. um, and very different, many flavors of people on the pro-life end. And it's important that we can listen as much as we can to what pro-choicers are saying, because that will help us frame our argument better, but also just, I mean, help us be compassionate. I know I can come off like very strong on on this issue, um, but I'm certain that if someone who was pro-choice who had an experience with an abortion came up and was talking to me, my tone would change. And I think it's important that it does. And there's a very clear difference between between someone who has a genuine question about the pro-life issue and they are seeking for answers. They don't know where they're at. They're kind of just like you said, they're on the pro-choice side because it's what everyone else is doing. There's a difference in how we approach that person to the crusader who just says, oh, well, you don't care about women. Yes. And there is a difference. I think of, so I was in D.C. for the Dobbs decision back a year ago in December. So, and at that time, there were uh, protesters who had abortion pills that they were taking Mm -hmm. in front, just at the Supreme Court to prove a point, I suppose. But so obviously that's horrible. So they're just taking these abortion pills to basically, Mm -hmm. basically as a slap in the face Mm -hmm. to any pro-life people that were there Mm -hmm. and just to kind of prove that point in a very uh, obnoxious way. So there are people like that who Mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing. And there are also what I think of as my peers that I went to high school with, for example, who on social media will ch- share pro-choice feminist things. And I don't think it's because they think they they, com- they completely are like, well, I'm going to take an abortion pill at the Supreme Court yeah. because my body, my choice. Right. Like there are people that genuinely I think are in the middle of all this c- craziness that yeah. we have a really great opportunity to hopefully reach with the truth of life. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that also applies. I mean, we might be going a little bit off track here, but in the issue of rape, I know a lot of people who say, well, you know, I oppose any other reason for abortion except for rape. And with that, I mean, (laughs) we are called to be kind and compassionate and patient. And And that's a horrible thing. Yeah. And it is our responsibility to not diminish someone who has had that experience. It is our responsibility to love and to care and to listen and say, I am so sorry that you have that experience. Um, And yet come in with the truth in a way that is kind and compassionate. Yeah. And and obviously, too, um, talking about this and 
women who have had abortion and carry the weight of that around. Uh, the whole message of the gospel is God's redemption yes. through yes. all of this, which is important not to forget. I mean, Absolutely. there is redemption, forgiveness, and healing and Absolutely. hope through all of this. And yes. no matter where people fall, like if they have agreed or disagree with everything we've said so far, um, our, our message ultimately is that there is that hope and yes. um, that life is so valuable and um, that's the conversation we want to yes. keep having. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. Yeah. So just moving moving on, what are some resources that people can check out yeah. to learn more about life? And if people are wondering, well, how do I get involved or yes. how do I learn what happens during an abortion or yeah. other things like that? What are some resources that have helped you or that you yeah. would recommend checking out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, going back to live action, that's a wonderful resource. Um, they're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, so you can access them anytime, anywhere. And they um, have all sorts of have, educational yes. resources, anything yes. you could want, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like Grace said, they have so many resources and just, just a wonderful group of people that are truly just doing yeah. the Lord's work. And that's a good place to look if you yeah. are thinking, well, I don't really know what I think. I don't yes. know what the stages of fetal development yes. are or what abortion means yeah. during them. That's a great place to go to learn more if you're kind of unsure about what you think yeah. or what really happens during yeah. abortion. Absolutely. Um, another one I'll plug is uh, Life Training Institute, LTI. Um, so my dad, Scott Klusendorf, he's the president of that. Um, and he trains speakers um, to talk about the abortion issue and um, basically defend the pro-life view very well um, and communicate it in a way that's accessible to everyone. Um, so if you want to go to prolifetraining.com, um, you can go to the resources tab and you can learn how to defend your pro-life position in five minutes or less. Um, I've learned how to do it in one, <laughs> as we've heard today. Um, but um, my dad and his team have just so many resources available for um, people of all age, really. Um, I would also recommend the Pro-Life Club on campus. I have to admit, I have never been to a session. I'm really sorry, <laughs> Liliana. Um, but she does amazing work. Um, and so I would recommend going there. And also, just to plug quickly, so that pr the Life Advocates group, yes. in partnership with the Institute for Faith yes. and Freedom, has yes, a summit coming up. Yeah. Also that we should mention, it's going to be an event on April 22nd. I'm not sure of the time, but if you're a student on campus, uh, look around for posters. There'll be more information up. I think there already is information out. But this event will have Tony McFadden, who's mm -hmm. a friend of mine. She's really great. She had an abortion and mm -hmm. has a, an incredible story of redemption from that and is now a pro-life advocate. Yeah. So they're going to be having her speak, some other pro-life speakers come speak. Mm -hmm. So if you want to kind of learn how as someone as a part of Gen Z can you know, engage with pro-life topics and figure out how you can talk to your peers about it. That's yeah. a great thing coming up at Grove City, yes. April 22nd. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, another, this is uh, for all my readers, and even if you're not a reader, it's a good thing to do. Um, Pre-order the second edition of The Case for Life, Equipping Christians to Engage in the Culture by Scott Klusendorf, shameless plug. Um, that is another excellent resource. It's amazing for students. Um, you will find a slew of information, a plethora, if you will. Um, so that's a really great resource as well for my readers. Um, if you want to look more on the whole worldview side of education, um, I would recommend Summit Ministries. I know some Grove City students have gone to that. Um, it's basically just a giant worldview camp. And of course, they have a section on abortion, but um, that will just help students gain a better, well-rounded view of what it means to be a Christian in today's culture. Um, and then obviously, the Institute for Faith and Freedom um, and register for the Post Row America Conference on April 13th and 14th. I think that's going to be wonderful and I can't wait to go. So. Yeah, it certainly is. And we're really excited, especially for Abby Johnson to come. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much, Emily, for joining me. This has been a really good conversation, I think, just breaking down a lot of different things that's left me with a lot to think about even. There's just, you know, it's a really important issue and I'm glad that we were able to shed more light on it today. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. This was wonderful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And for everyone listening, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you'll come back next week for another episode in that you'll keep checking out all of the things that the Institute for Faith and Freedom is putting out and that we'll see you at our upcoming events. Thank you.
For more information on the Institute for Faith and Freedom, visit faithandfreedom.com.